Hi, I'm David Hill, and I am the Senior Technical Marketing Architect for VMware's Cloud Services Business Unit, vCloud Air. Today, we continue our conversation about the VMware vCloud Air Disaster Recovery Offering. We are going to perform a test failover of the virtual machine we configured for replication in the previous video. First, I want to point out some of the steps we will perform to carry out a test failover. You get unlimited test failovers per year, so you are not restricted in any way how many times you can test your failover scenarios. We are going to show you how you initiate a test failover either through the vSphere web client or the vCloud Air portal. There are some recovery options we can configure and we will take a look at those as we go. Most importantly, once the test failover is completed, we are going to examine the virtual machine to make sure that everything looks the way it's supposed to. We will examine the network connections and I want to point out that you do have options for network configuration. By default, it is going to be using DHCP, which is fine for our tests here, but that is something you may want to consider and change before you power on the virtual machine. We will verify that the virtual machines are operational, so we will do some basic things like power on the virtual machine, test the network connectivity and the network connection, and we are going to make sure that everything is communicating properly. In this instance, the virtual machine will be connected to a test network and it's not a member of a domain. Once all that is completed, we will perform a test cleanup, which will undo all the test configurations we have done and confirm that replication is still in place. Let's go ahead and look at the demonstration. Now we're going to look at how we do a test failover. And this is really important when you think about how you actually prepare for a disaster. Because we want to make sure that when we fail over to vCloud Air, that all our virtual machines that we're failing over have connectivity and are able to perform the services that we need to. So we do a test failover in order to make sure that everything is running, everything is connected properly, and everything performs as expected. So let's take a look at how we do this. So we go to our vSphere replication plug in and we click on the monitor button to take us to the area where we actually have our replication configured and then we can see here that we have our outgoing replications configured for our virtual machine that we configured in the previous tutorial and that the status is okay and we know that it's being replicated so DR test 01 has an okay status so everything's performing as expected we're replicating correctly. We can see in the replication details that our last sync duration, our status, how long the RPO is configured for. And we can also see our number of point in time recovery options. So how far back can we go when we do our failover? Now in this window as well, we have a number of buttons along the top that allow us to perform different actions. So we can configure replication, we can pause it, we can stop the replication, or we can force a sync. But importantly, we can also run a planned migration and carry out a test recovery, which is what we're going to do for this demonstration. So we click the Run Test Recovery button, and this brings up the wizard that allows us to actually perform this test recovery. So we have the option to actually synchronize recent changes. Now this forces us to actually replicate the recent data changes from the actual virtual machine that's running now. However, we, for this demonstration, we're actually going to use a previous point in time to demonstrate how we use this capability. So we can select a previous restore point, a replication point, based on what our point in time instance configuration was. So we select the previous one, we click next, and then in the next this window, we have the ability to look at what virtual data center we're failing over to. It shows us the instant sync point that we're using. And then we have the ability to power on the virtual machine. So we'll, we'll leave that tick box checked so we can actually power on that virtual machine without us having to do it manually. And we click Finish. So now the process is going to run to actually configure that virtual machine so now that we've configured the, the test failover for this virtual machine, we're going to open our recent tasks pane. 
to make sure that the task is actually performing. So we look at our recent task and we see that a test recovery is currently being carried out for that virtual machine. So let's go over to vCloud Air and look at the virtual machine in there. So now we're in vCloud Air, we'll go into the disaster recovery to the cloud virtual private cloud. And we see that our virtual machine DR test 01 has a recovery status of test complete. But because we're performing a test and not actually carrying out a failover, we want to make sure that the replication is still continuing in the background, just in case our data center actually fails. So we can see that the replication status for that virtual machine is still ongoing and it's still running while we're doing these tests. So let's go back to the virtual machine and we'll, we'll run some tests on that virtual machine to make sure it has the right connectivity and performs as expected. So we'll select that virtual machine and we can see that the status is powered on so we know it's running and we'll just open the virtual machine console and we'll actually log in to that virtual machine. So we'll enter our administrator password. And all we want to do with this virtual machine is just check that it has basic internet connectivity. This is all we need. It, it, it's a basic server and we just want to make sure that it can connect to the internet correctly. So we'll do a basic ping test. And first we'll look at the actual IP address. So we can see that this virtual machine has an IP address of 192.168.185.20. So we know it's got an IP address. We can ping out to the internet successfully and we're getting a reply from a number of hosts out on the internet. So we know that this virtual machine is connected correctly when we've done our test failovers. Our firewall rules are all connected and configured correctly. So we know that this is working now we've performed a test failover. So we'll simply log out from this virtual machine. And we're happy with our actual test that we've performed. And we know that this virtual machine can fail over successfully to the cloud. So now we've done this test, we actually want to clean up. And we want to just put this virtual machine back into a replicated mode. So we can actually just use it in the event of a failure. So we'll revert. So the easy way to do this is just select that virtual machine and click the cleanup button. We say yes, and this just runs a cleanup task and shows that this cleanup task has started. So what this is actually doing is this is deleting the information that we've just run in that test and just putting this virtual machine back to the previous replicated point. So no changes have actually been saved or stored for this virtual machine. It just allows us to have it back as a placeholder VM running in the event that we need to perform a failover. So now we see that this virtual machine has a recovery status of replication in progress. So this means that it's just sat there, it's powered off, and everything's just been replicated. So if we go back to the vSphere web client and do a refresh on that virtual machine, we can confirm that again, all our replication settings are configured correctly and that the replication is performing successfully. Now that we have validated our test failover, we are now going to move on to the next step, which is actually performing a real failover from the on-premises environment to vCloud Air. You can watch that video on vcloud.vmware.com tutorials along with all the other videos in the series. Thanks for watching.